So uh, oxytocin is released when you have touching of the skin. So I suppose uh, if you're not able to touch each other, then oxytocin could be a good option to take exogenously. <laughs> but you can also form it endogenously. Uh, the good thing about it is you can combine it with other things. And perhaps it's, it kind of has that synergistic um, uh, skin sensitivity mechanism. If you just feel like uh, the sensitivity of whatever skin, whether it's pubic skin or otherwise, um, yeah, make sure that uh, there's not something that you're on um, that's causing that skin to be less sensitive. You know, some atypical or, or less well-known agents. So uh, I didn't know a lot about these before preparing for this podcast. Um, oxytocin, which yep. you know, people call the love hormone, and then apomorphine, which has very little to do with morphine. I think there's something in the extraction process, but yeah. it does not have any properties that are analogous to morphine yeah, whatsoever. It's not an opioid. So maybe the name was a bit of a, a killer for this drug. It, yeah, the apomorphine, it's usually called APO, APO, usually all in caps. Um, it was previously kind of like, um, I don't know if I want to say marketed, but purported to help with um, detoxing from opioids, like uh, morphine and fentanyl. So perhaps that's why, but it's a very old molecule. It's been used for more than a hundred years. Um, and this is, it's kind of repurposed. So it used to be used for Parkinson's disease because it is dopaminergic. And then, as we mentioned earlier, it's also, um, I believe a, um, five HG2A antagonist. So, um, sometimes it's combined with yohimbine. Know, which also works on the yeah. alpha adrenergic system, but kind of the opposite. So it's a balancing effect. Yeah. So this one also works on alpha adrenergic system, which trazodone does as well. I, I don't mm -hmm. know if we mentioned that, but uh, this one seems to hit all of those targets except for uh, vasodilation. Yep. Uh, I mean, you could get that mediated by the dopamine effect. Uh, and I believe that works on the arterial side, not necessarily. It but does. Yep. If you have a big venous leak, like, and nothing is working for you, you probably need to see a urologist about that. Definitely. But sometimes if there's a slight venous leak, you can overcome that with more arterial flow um, up to a point, right? Mm -hmm. At a certain point, the venous leak may progress, um, but it has basically all the unique properties you would want. And as like a lot of these medications is the case, it yep. seems like the, the side effects or nausea is the limiting factor there. Dose dependent nausea. Um, when looking into when doing the research for this, it was interesting because it's often used in dogs to induce emesis because a lot of times dogs you want the dog to throw things up. that they're not supposed to. Yep. And it works great in dogs. Uh, does not work well in cats because they don't have that same amount of uh, dopamine receptors. You, it kind of works, but they don't recommend it. Um, also, just kind of proving that cats can't love you the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we posed the question, are cats permanently motivated? or permanently depressed and unmotivated. I've actually seen examples of both cats. Yeah, um, it, they just have a very narrow window of possibility. Dogs can be really sad. They can also be very motivated. They have a dopaminergic system more similar to humans, mm -hmm. whereas uh, cats, no matter what, um, they're just gonna be the same all the time. They Operating don't Operating like, like a person on too high of a dose of an SSRI, slightly dampened dopamine. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the next one is oxytocin. This is also known as pitocin. You might've heard, uh, your obstetric provider, if you've had a baby or if your spouse had a baby say, you know, uh, up the pit or, um, we need more pitocin, you're bleeding too heavily out, you're hemorrhaging after, um, you give birth. And, uh, this is kind of like the, the love and connection hormone. So you think about oxytocin often goes kind of hand in hand with prolactin for lactation and breastfeeding. Um, Oxytocin is a uh, pituitary hormone, but um, for whatever reason, it's somewhat known as the monogamy hormone in females, but not in males, whereas antidiuretic hormone might have some effect there. Um, so uh, oxytocin is released when you have touching of the skin. So I suppose uh, if you're not able to touch each other, then oxytocin could be a good option to take exogenously, <laughs> but you can also form it endogenously. Uh, the good thing about it is you can combine it with other things and perhaps it's, it kind of has that synergistic um, uh, skin sensitivity mechanism. If you just feel like uh, the sensitivity of whatever skin, whether it's pubic skin or otherwise, um, yeah, make sure that uh, there's not something that you're on 
um, that's causing that skin to be less sensitive. Um, but also um, try to resensitize. It's almost like a, a positive feedback mechanism, especially in patients who are postpartum or patients after androgen deprivation therapy or patients after uh, like they're really uh, unsensitive to androgens that have been on a bunch of finasteride that does happen. Um, but uh, this can be part of a stack and then um, it, it kind of has a synergistic effect with other ones. So this is, uh, to my knowledge, never used just by itself. Yeah, I, I've yet to seen it be used like that. I, I'm sure some bio biohacker out there is using it just by itself. Um, but speaking of combining things, we specifically recommend not combining these things unless you're specifically advised to do so by your care provider. Um, yeah, all of these should be prescribed by your doctor. None should yes. be gotten off research chemical websites for exactly. animals. Uh, because the more of these things you add together, or if you're someone who has any kind of a coagulation predisposition, uh, then your risk of you know, priapism and just to scare people, permanent sexual dysfunction, the higher that risk is going to be as well. Yep. Penile amputation. Yep. That has a ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess so.